Hello and welcome to another short drawing lesson. This week I'm going to show you how to construct a simple wheel. Um, here we've got a couple of wheels, an old fashioned one and a new one in section. And what we're looking for is the, point, the points at which there's a dramatic change in direction. So here we've got the tread and it changes direction here to go to the sidewall. So this is the tread area. Here we've got where the tyre meets the rim, that's an important point. Here we've got the bulge in the sidewall, that's a really important one. Then we've got a small section of rim here that changes and goes across. And in the centre here we've got some kind of hub nut assembly and the, the axle itself and the, how that changes size here, that's quite common. So those are all important things to show. And you often see the brake drum through the gaps in the spokes too. So these are important parts. Same on a modern wheel, we've got the same kind of things going on. So picking those dramatic changes in direction is the key to which lines you're going to draw in 3D. So let's have a go at that now. So here's our axle for the car. I've done a separate video on drawing ellipses in, in perspective, drawing circles in perspective, so they are ellips ellipses. Um, but just to recap, the important thing when drawing a, a circle in perspective, an ellipse, and placing it in your drawing is that the minor axis, the shortest distance across your ellipse, should sit on your axle line. So here we've got the long distance and the short distance across the circle. The short one is perfectly aligned with your axis. So that's the important thing to remember. And uh, once you've done that, you can then go on to construct your drawing. So here we've got, this will be the, the edge of the tread. And I'll duplicate that and move it across. And now we've got a section that can be the tread. And just to make it a bit easier to understand, I'll hide the part we can't see. So here's the tread of our wheel. And um, now we can duplicate that again. And this time scale it down. And this will be where the tire meets the rim. So we've got a, a sort of an even gap there, both sides. it there. Oop. So now we've got a, sl a slab sided tyre. And now there's the fun part, we'll duplicate that once more. And we'll do, this is the line that shows the bulge in the side sidewall. So at the moment it's still slab sided, it's just got a stripe on. But if I move it along the axis out here, suddenly it starts to look well, three dimensional. Now we've got a nice kind of shape to our sidewall and that's something that we can use for shading. So now we can carry on and make another duplication. This time we'll do the rim, something like that, and we'll duplicate it again, move it along the axle again, and this is the width of our rim. And again we can erase the part that we won't see make it easier. And now we can carry on and do the center parts. Ooh. Sorry, let's duplicate there. Duplicate that one. So you could do this freehand, it just takes a lot more care <laughs> and uh, trial and error to get the nice, nice ellipses. Um, or you could, if you were using pencil and you've got some templates, you could use those to draw around as well. And this is definitely the easy way, but it's quick. It makes it easier to, to demonstrate. So I'm always making sure that these ellipses are sat nicely on the axle so that they're all perfectly lined with each other. And there we go. So this is gonna, I won't go to any more detail on this particular one. You can go to much less detail. Um, one of my favourite cartoonists is Francois, I think he's Belgian, and he draws some great old vehicles and his tyres or wheels are mostly just donuts. They're just these kind of, these kind of shapes. So there's no tread and there's no shape to the sidewall, they're just donuts and they're very chunky. Um, 
And I wonder if that's partly because um, when, they, when they're reproduced in the comic itself, like here, they're very tiny little drawings. So they have to read, you know, if, if I put tread and sidewalls and everything in there, or then it would just get too busy and messy. So I, I think that might be partly the reason that they does these nice cute donut shapes. Of course they are fun, <laughs> which is good for a cartoon. So how much detail do you put in? Let's have a look at a few examples. Here's a, a recent sketch I've done. It's quite a loose-ish kind of one. It's kind of, kind of a loose sketch. So that means that if, if I'd drawn every single spoke and all the tread on these wheels, it would have had an area of the sketch that was just really full, far too full of detail. It would have been just, it would have upset the balance of the sketch, basically. There's, I'm trying to get an even distribution of kind of in, interesting things to look at, with some areas slightly more detailed so they draw your eye to them, and some areas slightly less detailed so that you don't draw your attention to them so much it, to help with the composition. Um, so that's a choice you'll have to make as you do your sketch, is how much you put in. So notice with these spokes, I've suggested that there are spokes, but I haven't drawn every single one. And the same with the tread there, I've just kind of suggested that there's a notched edge to that tread, but I haven't gone all the way around. Um, same with this wheel in the background, there'll be a bit less there, but there's still a suggestion of spokes and things. So that's um, one particular type of drawing where, where I've, it's reasonably detailed, but I've still I'm not gone full on. <laughs> um, here's a, an even quicker sketch, more of a doodle. A friend zooming along. And because this car's zooming along really fast, the spokes disappear altogether. You just can see through there and you can see the body behind. And because it's a, a quick doodle, I didn't even do things like the shape of the rim or anything like that. I've still got the sidewall shape, that's an important one I find. Um, but I didn't go as far as doing the, the shape of the rim or anything like that. It was just that was enough for that sketch. And just for a bit of contrast here, I've got a more modern Ferrari. And there again, it's a fairly simply constructed wheel, um, just enough to show the um, the shape of that, you know, that conical shape of the rim. And um, and you can see the, the brake disc through there and stuff. So it's just getting the, a balance of the right amount of detail for the particular, particular sketch that you've done. Um, you don't always have to draw every single thing that's in front of you. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, let me know in the comments if you did, subscribe and like and all that stuff, and I'll see you for another one soon.